CataractCoach.com. This opacity is stuck to the capsule. So what's your next move to address this? Let me show you the case. I'll show you the beginning of the case so you can see what kind of cataract it is. It's this cataract, a lot of posters, some caps or stuff, a lot of stuff on the posterior aspect of the lens, on the capsule, adherent. Patient's vision is very poor here, maybe 20 out of 200 or 6 out of 60. And now starting off with the rexus. And watch this. We start the rexus and you notice that oh, the whole lens is a little bit loosey-goosey. So I can't even poke in with my forceps like I normally do. I'm going to have to switch to a sharp cystotome just to be able to puncture the lens capsule. Remember, there's an advantage using the forceps to puncture the lens capsule because then I can tell, is the capsule taut enough? Is the zonic support good enough that I can poke in with relatively blunt instruments like the tip of my forceps? Here, I had to use a very sharp 27-gauge needle, a cystotome. So now the rexus can com be completed and everything will be okay. There's a little wrinkling of the lens capsule, measuring out a 5-millimeter rexus here, and we'll get this accomplished. Now, let me tell you about retinarounds.com. We've already launched the channel. You're already missing out. You better go sign up. It's retinarounds.com for the free daily email. Everything's posted there, just like catacoach.com. And then also youtube.com slash at retinarounds. Check it out. You're going to learn a lot. Now, here comes the rexus. Again, a pretty much routine case. We're going to get to the end of the case here, and I'll show you what's going to happen as we clean it up. So beautiful 5-millimeter rexus. And we're going to do some higher dissection, then we'll do some nucleus removal. And the key is going to be, how do you clean this up? Here's the end of the case. I spread the video up to 2x, cleaning up the cortex. And you can see it's got all this sticky lens material adherent to the capsule, the undersurface of the anterior capsule rim, the posterior capsule, got a lot of gunk on it. And we can try to uh, aspirate this out, and so I'm using a little bit of vacuum here, but i got to be gentle. Because remember, there was that zion relaxity we noticed when we were making the rexus. So again, trying to clean this up, uh, I'm getting somewhere. I'm doing a little bit of capsule vacuum. You can see the striae, the radial lines as the capsule gets sucked into that port. So we're using very low vacuum, but even then, I'm not really able to fully clean this up. We'll clean up as much as we can. Why don't we clean it up? Uh, maybe viscoelastic going inside there. Can we visco dissect it off? So there's the viscoelastic. Maybe we'll do a little capsule polishing. Oh, no, going in with forceps. Grab me with the capsule rexus. Can I grab that thing and pull it off? And we're going to try. And there it is. Uh, finally, there it is. I grabbed it. Now, how hard should you yank? I'm trying to peel it off, and it's kind of come up a little bit, but it's still adherent. Now, do I amputate it here? Do I yank a little bit harder? What do you want to do to get that thing off? Or am I tempting fate here? Should we just leave it? and put the IOL in. So I'm gonna try now a little capsule polish, polishing the undersurface of the anterior capsular rim. And we can try to also polish that thing off, but it's not gonna come. So what we're gonna do instead is just put the lens in. We'll get the lens inside the eye, put it into position, it looks like a toric monofocal lens, hydrophobic acrylic, so get that position where we need to. I can try scrape that area one more time, maybe try scrape it with the chopper. Maybe, maybe you can get it off. Maybe there's another technique. We could try get with the eye probe. Once the eye well is in the eye, we feel a little bit more uh, safe and secure about that. Should I do a posterior capsular rexus now? We can go under the optic, poke into the system. Should I do a posterior capsular rexus? Now, are we overthinking this? Should we just make life easy and then try to grab with the, for the aspiration again? It doesn't come. It didn't come with the forceps. You know what? I'm just going to leave it be. Leave this alone. I know it's going to cause a little bit of inflammation in the post op period. It's going to cause an early PCO. Why not put, put the lens in like we've done here, let it heal up, give it a couple months to heal, bring the patient back, do a YAG laser capsulotomy, right? Do that YAG laser capsulotomy, and that'll make life a lot better. Let me show you a different case. Here we have a surgeon who says sometimes he uses the edge of the eye. Well, look at that to scrape and polish the posterior capsule. I've never seen that before. I thought that was an interesting idea. So as you insert the lens, use the edge of the lens, which is pretty hard. It's a hydrophobic acrylic material here. And using that sharper edge of the lens to help scrape and polish the posterior capsule. Again, innovative idea. I think that's interesting. Now, in a case like mine, I don't think that would have worked. In the case that I showed you of my patient, we had a big, huge attachment there. I don't know if that's going to do enough. Now, certain here, spinning the lens round and round, you can actually use that edge of the haptic to pause the undersurface of the anterior capsule rim and look, free up any little bit of residual cortex there. Now, there's the toric lens getting that thing lined up. 
And now at this point, you can go ahead and, and remove the last bit of lens material. There it is. There's the cortex bit. And call this a day. Interesting case here. So again, what would you have done in my case? Like me, put the lens in or something else. And remember, check out retinarounds.com. we got a new video every single day right now. Check it out.